Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the residence session on the last day of our virtual open house. My name is Craig Chips, and I'm the manager of Canadian Student Recruitment. I am joined today by four lovely panelists, emphasis on lovely. And before I give them an opportunity to introduce themselves, I wanted to first acknowledge that Wilfrid Laurier University and its campuses are located on the Haldeman Tract, the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. This land is part of the Dish of One Spoon Treaty between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples and symbolizes an agreement to share and protect our resources and to not engage in conflict. We recognize and honor and respect these nations as the traditional stewards of the lands and waters of which Laurier is now present. So we are very excited to spend a little bit of time with you today talking about residents. I wanna point out to you that the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen, if you're joining us live, is the place where you can pop in your questions and our panelists will be typing out answers and I will also be picking some of them to be part of the broadcast. I will tell you right now that we're not gonna necessarily just focus on the bricks and mortar stuff. So a lot of you probably wonder, how big will my room be? How do I get into residence? What's the roommate situation? Um, so ask those questions, we're gonna be happy to answer those, but we wanna spend a little bit of time talking a little bit about the culture in residence as well, because I think that's the thing that students often don't think, or it's a secondary thought for them. And it's actually, I think the thing that everybody on this panel for sure is the most psyched about. So I'm gonna do make with the introductions, I'm gonna ask each of our panelists to share with one, obviously their name, the program that they are in, we want to know where in the world they're coming from, uh, so their current living situation and their location, as well as their favorite res residence memory, or in the case of Eugenia, who I'll get to start first, her favorite memory about being a locust student. Eugenia, good morning. Great. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eugenia. I'm in my second year of the social work program uh, here in Brantford. And I am, as a, yeah, I am living in Brantford right now. And I was a local student in my first year. And my favorite memory would probably be going to events and getting to meet people. My first year was online, so I was very afraid of that social situation, but Locus definitely helped with that. Fantastic. Bridget, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Bridget Brown, and I currently live here in Waterloo in our Bricker residence. I'm the Don of the fifth floor and also the house council advisor. Um, I'm from Toronto, but as I mentioned, I'm here, and I'm a third year student in biology. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm going into my fourth year of Law and Society. I am currently living in Brantford. I am in the residence of Grand River Hall, in which I am a residence education advisor, which is basically a dawn, but instead of doing programming for like a community of students, I do fun programming for the whole building so that the whole building can like get to know each other. Um, but I was a dawn for a year in my second year uh, before becoming a residence education advisor. Um, and I think my favorite memory from residence, I'll go back to my first year, um, would have to be there was one night during midterms um, and midterms are basically exams, but they just pop them in the middle of in the middle of the semester just to just to have some fun with us. Um, but it was one time during midterms, my first midterms, I was really stressed and so were my roommates, but it had snowed all day that day. So it was like 3 a.m. and all of us decided that that was the perfect time to go outside and have a snowball fight. Uh, so we went outside, we met a couple people on the way, just asked them if they wanted to join. And we had this massive snowball fight just outside of our residence at 3 a.m. And it was definitely a great stress buster and a really great memory. Wonderful. I remember when my sleeping patterns were like that. <laughs> Those days are long behind me, but good for y'all. <laughs> and then last but certainly not least, good morning, Esther. Hi, everyone. My name is Esther. I'm currently in my fourth year of the health science program. I'm in Waterloo right now. I'm in the residence Waterloo College Hall. I'm on the fourth floor. I am also a Don. Um, fun fact, I've actually never lived in residence prior to this year. 
And so far, it's been a really great time. One of my favorite memories so far, I think it's probably just being able to like see my students every day and talk to them and chat with them and always have someone around to like be able to talk to. And also we all got ice cream together in the beginning of the semester, which is really fun. We went to Menchie's and we literally just spent like two hours together. And then we also went to Waterloo Park and fed, went to pet the animals as well. So that social was very fun too. Awesome. And I am not the star of the show today by any means because I am the old guy who's almost bald. But my claim to Laurier fame is that I've actually lived in every conceivable style of residence that exists at Wolfram Laurier University. I lived in a dormitory double in first year. And at the time it was actually single sex. It was an all male residence and that no longer even exists anymore. Um, I actually opened Waterloo College Hall, the residence that Esther is now living in in second year. I was in Eiler Leupold, which was dormitory double room style. I was in apartment style in fourth year at University Place. And then I was a residence coordinator, so a full time after graduation for three years at the Branford campus and have lived in Grand River Hall, <laughs> where Emily now currently is on. So I have a real passion for residence. Um, as well. And there was a period of time where I actually was co-managing the Locust program. So I've got a real tight connection with all the things um, that all the panelists are here and uh, are here to talk to you about today. So I can verify that everything they're saying is true. Maybe I'll have something to add, but probably not because again, I'm pretty old. Okay, so we had one question in the chat already, but I want to jump into uh, one that I had sort of thought of prior to us getting all together. And so, again, for me, I always say the residence is not about the location, it's about the relationships. So I would love for the four of you to share, if you have one, a really cool relationship story. Um, I know for me, my cool relationship story is that um, I was on residence council in first year. And uh, the president became one of my best friends. He stood up at my wedding and he met my wife's friend at the wedding rehearsal. They started their first date, they say, was our wedding. And then my wife and I stood up in their wedding three years later. So that's my claim to fame. I, I'm guessing nobody's gonna top that. I mean, you can't because you're all still students. I'm assuming nobody's marrying anybody right now. But love to hear those relationship stories because they're super relevant. And Esther, you you finished last time. How you would start this time? Okay, so since I didn't live in residence in first year, I'll share one from this year from my Dawn experience. Um, I was really nervous coming in, but turns out I've like made two of my bestest friends right now. Um, who one is on the same floor as me, one is like a floor below me. So that was really amazing. And then I can share one for my students. It turns out like one of my students who also lives out of province in Calgary, like moved here to this residence. Turns out their grandparents knew each other, these two students, and now they're best friends too, which is really interesting. I like how both their grandparents knew each other, even though one's in Ontario and one's in Alberta. So I thought that was really cool. I love that. That's fantastic. Emily, how about you? Absolutely. Um, I am going to share one of my student stories actually from when I was a Don in my second year. Um, so this is pre pandemic folks, um, but essentially it was move in day. So there was like hundreds of students coming onto campus and as a Don, you have to see all of your students when they move in to make sure they're doing good, um, to make sure they have everything they need to answer any questions. So I was running around my residence floor with a clipboard, like checking off names, being like, okay, I've met them, I've met them, they're okay, they're doing good, they need this, they need that. Um, and I knocked on the door to this one girl's room who I knew had just moved in and she was there and she was there with her mom and I was talking to them and everything. Her mom left to grab something and this girl just broke down in tears because um, it's move-in day. There's a lot of nerves. I cried in move-in day. Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, like, what's up? Are you okay? Are you good? She was crying. She was saying that she was nervous. She didn't come with any friends. All of her friends go to a different university. Um, and she was wondering when her roommates were going to move in. So... I sat with her for about 30 minutes, um, calmed her down, got her smiling, got her laughing. Um, but the point is that she was just so nervous that she wasn't going to make friends. Um, and her roommates actually never ended up moving in, which is terrifying. Uh, but don't worry, we got her roommates. Um, but my point of the story is that at the end of the day, I had set her up with another room of girls who I knew were like really friendly. Um, by the end of the day, they were pretty much best friends. That friendship continued throughout the entire year. Now they live together and they're inseparable. 
Uh, so this girl was so nervous she wasn't going to meet anybody, but by the end of the very first day, she had met probably lifelong friends. Um, and she did amazing after that. Uh, she had an amazing year. So that was definitely a relationship story. And we got to see a lot of those as dons, like students making lifelong connections um, pretty much right off the bat and then all throughout the year. Um, so that was one story that, that really stuck out to me. So Eugenia, you don't have the physical sort of gathering of people under one roof. Locus is all relationships all the time. So what's your cool relationship story from your experience with the program? Um, honestly, no, you're absolutely right. I didn't have that uh, gathering everyone under one roof type of story in first year. But if I'm being honest, my roommates right now, I met through Locus, like my best friends, the people I live with, I met them because of Locus. Um, we were all in the Locus House Council together and we two of us were from the same community and we got to meet each other and hang out even if it was just online through that aspect and it honestly really helped um, my anxiety per se because I was that student that Emily was talking about just breaking down first day no clue how you were going to meet people especially with the pandemic and everything's online but it ended up working out really well like I can say that I have pretty good roommates who yeah, I'm really happy about that. Fantastic. And Bridget, you close off this question. Um, to kind of bounce off what Eugenia just said, as I mentioned, I'm the House Council Advisor for Bricker. So what that basically means is that I plan programming within our residence. So I had to go through a hiring um, weekend where I'm hiring students who apply to House Council, which is open to all the students in res. And from there, I got to like, you know, hire my team, get the best team that I Thing possible that will do the best program for programming for Bricker. And through that, I also started to make connections with the other students because, you know, they come to you for everything, even if I'm not their Don, they just feel comfortable with you. And that's just the best way to kind of integrate your community because even with COVID, things still have to be virtual. Or we also have restriction rules in residence as of right now. So it's just a good way on those weekly meetings to like, hey, you're connecting with people from the 10th floor all the way from the second floor all around. And all our students like love to hang out with each other. And I think that's just a great thing to see that because of this council so in community that we built that everybody's so comfortable with each other and it's just so fun to like talk to them and see them working with each other because a lot of them are in the same program so it's just like from like you know sometimes I feel like a mother just watching my children grow it's just it's just a great experience yeah that is so true residence is great um locus is great but if you want to make it incredible you have to get engaged and get involved and there's so many different ways you can do that through the residence councils and maybe you're not going to take on a leadership role like Bridget or Eugenia have done. Maybe it's just participating, but those participation pieces are important as well and can lead to all sorts of cool opportunities. I know that I was talking with uh, my colleague about this, the diversity in terms of all the other engagements outside of residence that all of you have as panelists, like a lot of that starts in that first year experience and making sure you're connected through your residence community, through Locus, opens up the doors to the rest of the leadership opportunities that exist at Laurier, and there's so many of them. Okay, so we got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, and the first one is a classic. Can you talk to, can we talk to the setup of our residences? So describe dorms, describe apartment style. What's the situation with bathrooms? So I'm gonna let everybody kind of do a quick run. So. Emily, first, I'm going to assign you to talk about what's the deal in Brantford specifically. Absolutely. I love answering this question. All right. So in Brantford, we are very fortunate that all of our residence buildings are apartment style. Uh, so essentially what apartment style means is that you have one door that is in the, you know, the hallway, one door, it enters into a kitchen, a shared kitchen, you know, uh, a couple bathrooms, depending on the people in the room, which I'll touch on like in a second, uh, and then some bedrooms that, you know, feed onto the kitchen. Um, so it's just like a normal apartment, any old apartment. Uh, the bathroom situation is that if you have three students in an apartment, you will have one bathroom, but then the second you add a fourth student, you have to have two bathrooms, and then it just moves up from there. Uh, on the Brantford campus, typically we have minimum two people to a room, but most of the time it's three people assigned uh, to the room. 
So minimum two or three, um, and then maximum amount of people that we can have in an apartment, I believe is about eight, um, but that is in one of our other apartment buildings that um, I believe might be opening in the winter, but isn't currently open right now. It's a really cool space. Um, and then, yeah, so you get your own kitchen, you get your own bedroom. Uh, there is the opportunity on the Brantford campus to have a double room in an apartment. So essentially what that would be um, is another bed in this space um, or like a bunk bed. Um, but that actually hasn't happened for the past two years now. Um, we've just, we know that students want their own room. So if you're, if you're filling out a residence application in Brantford and you don't want to share a physical bedroom with someone, just make sure that's nowhere on your application. And there's um, a very high chance that you will not be sharing a room, but you will be sharing uh, a kitchen and a bathroom and all that jazz. Um, and what that means to the fact that we have kitchens, everyone has a kitchen, is that there is no cafeteria on the Brantford campus. However, there is a grocery store, farthest five minutes walk from the farthest residence uh, and you just get to cook all your food but don't worry if you're lazy like me and you don't like cooking every day there are a lot of amazing food options that are right in the downtown that's like a two minute walk from the farthest uh, residence building so yeah that's residence on the Brantford campus perfect thank you very much Esther I'm going to get you to talk specifically about dormitory style the style that you're living in as well as maybe a little bit about double room dormitories as well Okay, yeah, so here in the Waterloo campus, we have dormitory style and apartment style. So the dormitory style I live in is called single dorm. With single dorm, it's you have every, you have your own room, you have your own bed, your chair, everything, everything is yours, but then you share a bathroom with the, with someone of the same sex, and that's just one person. The shower, toilet, you share that together, and that's single dorm, and with single dorm, it's uh, mandatory that you guys also buy a meal plan with it and with double dorms it's just think of your typical dorms you see in movies and tv shows half of everything is yours half of everything is the roommate so you have your own bed closet um, table chair stuff like that and then the other side is your roommates and with uh, dor double dorms for dormitory styles it's a communal washroom so every floor has a washroom that has plenty of stalls and that gets cleaned daily by our janitors and with the dormitory style as well we also have a community lounge within each community and in that lounge we also have a small kitchenette that you can use as well but most of your food will come from your meal plan in the dining hall and with the double dorms as well there is a lounge and a small kitchenette in each floor to each community fantastic so bridget is living in an apartment style in Waterloo. So Waterloo campus also has apartment style. In fact, she's living in what I think most people generally agree on is the best residence on campus to live on because it's apartment style, but it's also centrally located, which is typically more what the dorm style residents are, are like. But in terms of apartment living in Waterloo, probably a lot in common with how it's set up in Brantford for Bridget. If you can give a little bit more detail about that, that would be for sure, Craig, as I mentioned, I'm living in Brickery this year. So how apartment style works, and I'll also go into my first year experience, which is with King's Court. So in my first year, I lived in apartment style again, and how that worked is in King's Court, there's both five and four bedroom options. Um, it's all lottery, so you don't really get to choose which one you're placed in, but I was placed in a five room. I just happened to be room C, so I got my own washroom. So how it worked was room A and B had their own washroom, um, shared a washroom, room C had their own washroom, and then D and E share the washroom. So that's just all by chance if you do happen to apply to apartment style. But in this year, I'm in Bricker. So Bricker, every room in Bricker has four apartment, um, four bedrooms. So from your four bedrooms, there's two washrooms on each side. So again, depending on your letter, you'll share with your roommate. Nobody ever gets like one washroom. So it's most at most is two people to one washroom. And also within Bricker, you again have your kitchen and a common room area. So as kind of Esther mentioned, you get your own kitchen, you can buy your own groceries and your common room is just like basic living room where you can sit down, chillax with your roommates or whatever you'll like to do. Um, I'll also like to emphasize with apartment style, we do have meal plan, but it is different from dormitory style. With apartment style, you only get flex dollars, which is just a certain amount at every semester and you're allowed to use that on any like type of food service platform here on um, the Laurier campus which includes the dining hall but just think of flex dollars kind of like a gift card you get a $50 gift card and every time you use it money gets deducted while compared to our dormitory students they also get um their their amount of money but they have unlimited access to the dining hall but if you are an apartment style student you can get all these things but there will come there will be deductions 
at the end of it. Perfect. That's like really timely because we were getting some questions in the chat about the meal plan. So Emily, I'm going to get you to speak to a little bit about the meal plan situation at Bramford. Absolutely. Um, so in Brantford, what you have is your one card. Um, now your one card is basically your one stop shop for pretty much everything. It's your student ID. It is your bus pass. You scan it to get you into certain buildings. And it is also where you have all of your meal plan dollars on. Um, so essentially, you load that card at the very beginning of the year, you can load it um, moving through the year as well. So if you find that the amount that you put on it at the beginning of the year just wasn't enough, you can add more money. Don't worry about that. The money carries over every single year as well. So say you finish the year with $50, that money is not just going to go into into the universe and just disappear. No, it will stay there and it will continue with you all the way uh, until you're done in your fourth year. Um, and essentially how it works is that you put a set amount. Um, I don't remember the exact amount, so I'm not going to say it right now, um, but it's in it's in the hundreds. I think it's like 400 or 600 um, each semester. And then you can spend that at the Fresh Co, which is the grocery store that's about a five minute walk from the farthest residence. You can purchase your groceries there um, and then you can come back and cook them. You can also use your one card at certain restaurants around campus. Um, so there is a burger place. Uh, there is um, Nine North Viet Thai Cuisine, which is really close. Um, there's a couple other restaurants. It works at a Sunset Grill, uh, works at a pizza place. Um, so a, a, a lot of little restaurants like that as well. Um, but essentially, it just it's basically just like a prepaid visa card that you put money on at the beginning of both semesters and then you can use it to do your shopping so that you don't really have to worry about setting aside money or budgeting for groceries which can be a large expense that students have to learn how to manage in their first year but if you're stressed about that don't worry you'll have a lot of support on campus fantastic esther i saw you were in the chat answering some questions about the meal plan anything you would add to bridget's description um, of how meal plan works for students in Wyoming? Wait, sorry, can you say that again? You cut off a little bit at the end. I saw you were in the chat and talking about meal plans. Is there anything you would add to how Bridget described the meal plan situation at the Waterloo campus? Um, so basically, I don't fully remember what Bridget said, but with the apartment style, it's flex dollars. I'm pretty sure Bridget mentioned that. And with uh, the dormitory style, it's around $5,000 for an all access five day meal plan and around $7,000 for an all access seven day meal plan. All access means you can visit the dining hall as many times as you want. If you, go, you can go 17, a day, 17 times a day or one time a day, it's like all you can eat buffet style. And with the five day all access, you get three free meal passes. And with the seven day all access, you get um, seven free meal passes. And some people opt for the five day all access because on the weekends, they'll usually go home. So they don't see a point of paying for the seven day all access. And then with the apartment style, oh, with the dormitory style, you also get flex dollars. You get around $600 uh, flex dollars, which is like Emily said, it's like your Laurier debit card. It's just Laurier currency that you can use to buy food at Starbucks, any buy food at Starbucks or Harvey's or anything in the food court, any food on campus you can use your flex dollars for. That's basically what I have to say for that. That's great. Perfect. Good summary. Eugenia, I want to ask you about the food situation, because if you're living off campus, you still got to eat. Um, how did you navigate that first as a first year living at home? and kind of being back and forth. And now this year actually living in an apartment, but off campus, um, how did you handle the meal situation? Um, absolutely. So during my first year, I was very lucky because since I was living at home, um, I was basically just able to cook at home. I do most of the cooking, I share with my mom. So that was nice. Um, and then moving to campus during my second year, uh, basically, uh, my roommates and I just kind of, we go to the Fresh Go because it's still a very close walk for us. So we just buy our own groceries and do our shopping. And yeah, uh, we also do go to the restaurants nearby that Emily mentioned. We have uh, really good places here around campus. Um, and I also know that, for example, in the Locust Lounge, for people who live a little bit farther away, we do have like kitchenettes and fridges and stuff so that if you bring your cooked food from home, you can store it there and then come back eat, and eat it later, heat it up, do what you need to do. Okay, fantastic. And this spur of the moment, because it feels like the moment is right here. I want to go around the panel, your favorite campus meal. 
So that could be in the case of Brantford, right? That's not, there is no cafeteria. So like, what's the restaurant? But also not just like, I like this restaurant. What's the meal? That's important. That's an important distinction. Emily, I'll start with you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I remember we talked a little bit about house councils, um, essentially on the Brantford campus and on the Waterloo campus, we have something called the first year leadership program, uh, which is essentially a facilitator through residents of multiple different I guess students union, students like students council. So if you're on like SAC at your high school right now, that's basically what it is, but it's different councils for different things. Um, so all the students that participate in that typically get really close. Uh, they get to meet a lot of people across campus and they also spend a lot of time with each other planning events. Um, so I actually would go in first year every single Sunday with a bunch of students from multiple different councils. And every Sunday we would go to Sunset Grill. Um, it was a five minute walk from the farthest residence building. So it was super easy, super convenient for all of us. Um, and we would go and we would just, we get a huge table and every Sunday we would have breakfast together. Uh, since it was on our one cards, it felt like it was like for free because <laughs> it was money that we spent a long time ago. Um, so it just felt like a free breakfast every single Sunday with friends. And it was a ton of fun. It was something I look forward to all week. Um, I actually got a text from them. Uh, like they started a group chat again. We're like, hey, like when everything comes down with, you know, the pandemic, it's safe, like let's go. And I was like, absolutely. The second it's safe, we're there. Um, so that's exciting. But what I would typically get is they make amazing blueberry pancakes at Sunset Grill. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe I just haven't tried like a bunch of other restaurants and some of you might be like, Sunset Grill isn't that fancy, Emily, but it's really good. They make really good blueberry pancakes and really good bacon. Um, so it might be like a little basic, but that's always what I would get. Um, so, yeah. Fantastic. Eugenia, let's, let's stick to, let's stick with Brantford. We'll get Brantford done first, then we'll move to Waterloo. What's, what's your go-to meal? Downtown. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so even though it's a little controversial because most people would probably go to Lonnie's, which is a poutine place, uh, necessarily, I don't think my favorite meal would come from there. I usually go to Hudson's to hang out with my friends and they have this really, really good spinach dip. They serve it with like pretzel bites and little like pita pieces. Delicious, 10 out of 10 recommend. Awesome. All right, moving to Waterloo. Esther, what is your favorite on-campus meal? Uh, my favorite would definitely be the chicken teriyaki fried rice um, in the dining hall. And they also always have pizza, pizza station that's there all the time, like for every meal, except for breakfast, obviously. So I always get that as well. Those are my two favorites. Nice. Bridget, how about you? Um, to kind of bounce off kind of what Eugenia said, we also have a restaurant here in the Waterloo campus called Will's. It's very popular, trust me, every day. Um, so the spinach dip is one of the most popular um, items on the menu, but preferably I just definitely go for the seagram wrap. It's just like like uh, crispy chicken, bacon, like, like the typical wrap, but they put it together with something called the rock and roll sauce and it's, it's top tier, trust me. Nice. So I do have opinions on this and the fact that I'm old doesn't matter, it's still relevant. So first I would say that my number two, and it's close, would be Wilfs and the Hawk Fingers, which by the way, are just chicken fingers. And it's like, yeah, they're chicken fingers, but you know what? They were made by students and you can taste the love. I'm just putting it out there, just putting it out there. And then, but my number one would be on Saturdays and Sundays, and it's probably different operating hours now, but the dining hall was open and only some of the food stations were open. So what I would do is I would roll in for like a 10, 30, 11 o'clock brunch, at which point I would get both a full-size Belgian waffle and an enormous omelet with like all the meat and like all the veggie fillings. And I, I would just skip, I would just power through like a superstar brunch. And then I wouldn't need anything until dinner. Um, and when you're trying to stretch out those meal plan dollars, it's just, it's just the perfect plan. So that's my take on that. Okay, uh, I want to move into questions about roommates. We've got a couple of those popping up right now. So first would be, how does the, if I have an interest in selecting a roommate, how does that work? Um, and also, when do I find out about the roommate situation in terms of the coordination and all that kind of stuff? 
So I'm going to throw this one to Bridget to start. And don't feel like you got to answer everything because I'm sure that Esther and, and Emily would be happy to swoop in as well. Uh, for sure. I'll definitely go just to the more lottery side of um, the roommate system. So as I mentioned, um, in Waterloo, at, a, at least our Waterloo campus, everything is lottery based. So when you do your application, and you um, submit your deposit, you you will be given a survey which asks you different kind of questions. Like, are you a quiet person? Do you find yourself to be more loud? Are you an early bird? Or you like to go to sleep later at night? And depending on your answers for that questions, they kind of kind of get all, all the other students who are applying round up their um, answers as well. And that's how your roommates are formulated. So as I mentioned, it's all kind of like up in the air, but I know the other ladies can kind of expand on how you can potentially get like a, your friend to be your roommate as well. Fantastic. So Emily, I specifically want to ask you about, so it was a follow-up question about, will my roommate be in the same program as me? And that kind of speaks to learning communities, which I know is a big part of what you do is in, in the edu or residence education program. So can you talk a little bit about that process? Absolutely. Um, so your roommate will, may not necessarily be in the same program as you. They could be in any program on campus. Um, however, there is an option when you are applying for residence to apply for a residence learning community, residence learning cluster. Um, they have them on both the Waterloo and the Brantford campus, but essentially what they are is they are a way to live with students with the same interests or in the same program as you. Um, so I know on Laurie's Brantford campus and on the Waterloo campus now, uh, we have the uh, Sussex program, which is essentially a program in which students do two years here, three years at a university uh, in Brighton, England, getting their law degree. Then they come back here, they take a bunch of tests through Laurier and they get certified to practice law in Canada. It's an amazing program. Look into it if that sounds interesting to you. Um, but that is a learning cluster that's offered is the Sussex cluster. Um, so you get to live with a bunch of people who are going to be going over to England with you who might be in a similar program to you, law and society, criminology, um, human rights and human diversity. Um, and then there's also other um, clusters like the game design cluster in which you get to live with all game design students and game design is a program offered on the Brantford campus. So there is options to live with people in the same program as you, but if you're not thinking about applying to a residence learning community or residence learning cluster, then um, it's really just a lottery. It depends on who you get placed with. Maybe you're going to get placed with someone in your program maybe you're not. Um, I know in my first year, I was not roommates with anyone in my program, even though I was in the Sussex learning cluster, um, but they were people who were also considering Sussex as an option as well. Um, and then I would like to speak to um, if you get to pick your roommates or if your roommates are going to be your friends. Um, so it is a, it is a lottery. Um, you don't, uh, you actually, you do get to pick However, how this happens is that when you apply to residence, you get this little code and it's like your roommate code. Um, and if you input someone else's code and they input your code and you both do that, then you guys will likely be placed together. If you input someone's code and they don't input your code, then you won't. Um, so it's just something you have to coordinate. So say you have a best friend who's coming to campus with you and you want to live in the same residence room, make sure on the application that you're inputting those little codes. It's very straightforward. It's at the top of the page. You'll see it, you can't miss it. Um, but that is the way that you would get to pick if you get to live with someone. Um, that only allows you to choose one other person. So if you're going with three people, it might just be a lottery system off of that. Um, but you do have an option to potentially room with like one of your friends. But other than that, it's really just a lottery system of who's going to be in your apartment um, and what their programs are going to look like. And when you get to find out who's going to be in your room is when you move in. Um, <laughs> you don't get any communication who your roommates are going to be until the second that you step through that door on our campus. And that's just because of confidentiality. We can't really be broadcasting students' names or their contact information or anything like that just to make sure that people are safe and that their privacy is protected but you will meet them when you move into residence um and then the way that you would know if you're rooming with a friend is just by checking your residence um acceptance letter that says hey you're going to be living in this residence building on this floor and in this apartment if your friend has that same thing then you'll know that you're living together um, I would also like to add on to what Emily kind of said, at least for my students, majority of them found found each other through social media. I think closer to the point when you are moving in, a lot of people will like create group chats depending on the year. And through there, they'll just kind of be like, hey, I'm living in Berker, I'm in 606. And then that's how they kind of meet each other. So if you're really interested in that, you can look for those group chats that are being made. But for the most part, you will be meeting them on moving day. Fantastic. Esther, anything to add relative to uh, 
Bridget and Emily's comments? The answer is no is an acceptable answer, by the way. Okay. Yeah, they We're, answered all. Yeah. Eugenia, I want to ask you though, how does the connectivity point, right? You don't have roommates, but you have people that are part of like your specific community and there's multiple communities in Locust. How does that process work for a student who, I guess, A, wants to be part of the Locust program? How do they find out about, find out about it? And then how do they make connections once they're in? Yeah, absolutely. So for Locus, and I believe it works the same in the Waterloo campus, you are placed with students uh, within your faculty. So even though you might not be in the same program, you are placed with students who have similar programs as you. And basically the way that it works is that it is very likely that your Dawn is also in that faculty so that they will also have some experience regarding um, how the schooling process and the academics and all that works out. Uh, personally, because I'm in the social work program and the there is a faculty of social work, like it is not part of the liberal arts faculty or the faculties. Um, it's, it's a faculty on its own. Everyone was part of the social work program, but now I am a OCA or a Don for the liberal arts, but I don't believe that it makes a difference. A lot of my students are in the same programs anyway. And even when they're not, they still have some classes together. So they still get to interact in that academic aspect. Okay, we are all caught up with the questions from the audience, but audience, feel free to keep them coming. We're live, this is about you. If you're watching the recording, um, people who are watching this probably have the same questions that our live audience does. So by all means, keep them coming. But I wanted to talk a little bit, everybody, about the challenges of your current living situation. So we talk about all the good stuff and there's tons of good stuff, but like with any learning experience, and I believe residence is a learning experience um, or connection with the Locust program, it's a learning experience. There's some downside as well. Um, and learning how to work through those downsides is, is all part and parcel of it. So I wanna ask, what is actually the most challenging thing about the residence experience from your perspective. And Esther, how about you lead us off on this one since the last time you just gave, you just gave a thumbs up on the previous answer. Yeah, so I can say a test for what my students say because we have this thing called Hop Talks where we have to have individual one-on-one -on -one talks with all our students just to check in and make sure they're well and be and act as a support for them. And what they tell me their biggest challenges is definitely just the day-to-day -day stuff they don't really do at home, like doing laundry or making sure they eat because usually like their parents would just cook for them and they just eat whenever or they just go to kitchen and grab a snack. Whereas now they have to like make sure they schedule time to after class to go to the dining hall with their friends or whatever, or make sure to grab food from the food court because sometimes they do forget. And as well as laundry, because they're <laughs> that's just one thing they owe it. All my students say, they're like, yeah, now I have to do my own laundry, which is annoying because our laundry room is in the basement and then we're on the fourth floor and they have to go all the way to the basement. So I think just those stuff are like, they have to now put their bed sheets like themselves, stuff like that. That's what they tell me their biggest challenges. How about you? Oh, uh, sorry, did you say Bridget? I think I said Bridget, but since no. it's on, Eugenia, why don't you just go ahead? Because obviously it's probably similar but different. And I mean, you've had both sides of it because locusts sometimes will be people that are living from home that are in the local community. And it'll be other also students that are from the local community living in an apartment, but just not a residence building. Yeah, absolutely. I would say sometimes the biggest challenge is that social aspect, and I'm gonna be honest, at least for myself, like fear of missing out, like FOMO, um, especially because I think that I, or at least I was like a very anxious about making that social connection. So even though your Dawn or your OCA, um, they're making programming and they're helping you make sessions where you can meet other people, sometimes that interferes with your classes. And if you can't go, you're all like, oh, I'm gonna miss out all this stuff so I would say that would probably be the biggest challenge and also making sure that um you're on track so because you don't have kind of like that residence on um who's like telling you like oh like um like this is how your programming works like all that stuff like you kind of have to 
be reminded of that on your own. It takes a little bit of planning, but it's not something that is like absolutely challenging. I would say like as soon as you're organ like as long as you're organized and you're keeping track of things, you should be okay. Yeah, um, very similar to, again, Eugenia. Uh, it's just all about balancing. So there's not no like time conflictions um, because you're not only a Don, you also have other commitments on campus, such as like me and Esther and I believe Emily as well are like ambassadors. So you just have to make sure like you're on schedule for your um, your course in classwork. You have your times for your students, like Esther mentioned with the hot talks, because it does take a, a lot of time to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations and make sure the progression is going well. And then and as I mentioned, for your other commitments and your other clubs. So it's not, not that it's difficult to plan out, but sometimes things do take longer than you expected. So you always just have to be prepared to bounce back and maybe commit more hours that you weren't expecting to the cause. And sometimes in residence, you think you have a plan and then someone swings by your room. It's like, hey, everybody's doing this, come on. Um, or maybe you get a text message during a webinar and you have to answer. Ah. Emily, last word on this question goes to you. Absolutely. Um, so I will build off of what Bridget said. Um, and I say one of the challenges for students is actually learning what resources are available to them on campus. Because everything that the other panelists have mentioned, there is a resource for. Uh, there is something to help you out and get you through anything that you're struggling with. Um, so as Esther was mentioning, Dons have Hawk Talks with all of their students. Uh, it happens four times a year, twice a semester. And it's essentially just a place where students can sit down and just talk to someone who wants to listen, who wants to give them guidance, who wants to help. If you need to vent, you can vent. If you need to cry, you can cry. If you wanna celebrate something, they'll celebrate it with you. It is an amazing space for students to just make sure that they're feeling supported. Um, but essentially it's also a space where Dons can say, hey, like you had a really hard time writing that essay. Why don't you go to the Learning Skills and Development Center or the equivalent on the Waterloo campus? Uh, and they'll teach you how to write an essay or hey, you really sucked at multiple choice. You're saying, okay, well, they can give you strategies for that as well. Or maybe you're talking to your Don and you're saying, I don't like this course. I wanna drop it and add a different one that I heard was super interesting. They'll send you to academic advising who's gonna help you with that. Uh, so there's essentially a resource for everything on campus and learning how to utilize those resources is going to make all the problems that you face as a student and that all students face at every university across the country, essentially. Um, it's going to help you learn how to tackle those challenges and use the resources that you have available. And once you do that, you might still have problems that at least you know that you have a bunch of people in your back pocket who are going to be able to help you out. Um, and learning all that stuff in first year is great because then you kind of get a little bit more smooth sailing as you go through your uh, second, third, and fourth year. Okay. So we have a really important question in chat. Um, about a part asking if apartments and housing at Laurier is LGBTQ plus friendly. Um, and I want to broaden that even a little bit more and just what is the vibe at Laurier specific to residents, I guess, for this conversation relative to diversity as a whole. Um, and I think, to be fair, I think everybody here probably has like something they want to say. So I want to give everybody a chance to speak to it if they want. And Bridget, I think I'm going to start with you. So yes, it is. It's also a part of the application um, survey that you get. They will ask you questions about that. For, for the most part, we have inclusive um, of, of styles here at the Laurier campus. Um, and a further thing I'll just also like to mention, we do have an equity, diversity, and uh, inclusion club here at our campus as well, which is it's part of the Mac House, but it's something that if you do identify with the LG. LGBTQ plus um, community. It's an option for you to join as well, but all, um, all styles here on the Laurier campus is inclusive to all ways of life. Emily, how about you? Um, so I'll just, I'll bounce off of what Bridget said. Um, so there is a space, as she said, on your application where you can apply to gender inclusive or gender, uh, gender inclusive or gender neutral floors or residence uh, like um, rooms. So essentially in, I believe on both campuses, but I can really only speak to the Brantford campus. Um, on the Brantford campus, there is an entire floor that is just completely gender inclusive. Um, you don't necessarily have to identify what your gender is or anything like that. And you can just live with 
anybody. Uh, and that floor really helps promote um, students being able to feel comfortable and to feel confident and to be in a space in which they know they're going to be accepted. All other floors, if you don't feel like living on gender inclusive, on the gender inclusive floor, every other floor is also inclusive as well um, and accepting of everyone. Um, if if at any point anyone feels that they have um, experienced harm in any way, shape or form, there's multiple resources that they can reach out to. And it's not something that Laurier tolerates at all. So if a student has felt like they experienced harm, there's going to be multiple processes that the student can take and everything is student led to make sure that the student is front and center throughout all of the processes that would happen. Um, but I will say that Laurier, the space that the Dons and that the Department of Residence creates in residence is a very inclusive space that puts the students' needs first. Esther, I keep doing this to you. Do you have anything to add as the last dawn, as the last dawn to speak? I think they covered everything, but just one thing to mention, um, the center, it's actually not a club, it's a center of equity, diversity, and inclusion. So they, they hold workshop, they hold events, and they do everything to promote social justice issues from the residence rooms to the classrooms. So it's not a club, but it's actually a center that you can go to. And then you know, I'd be curious to get your take. Obviously, there's not the same kind of logistical questions with the living arrangements, but how have you seen, as both as a student in the LOCUS program and now as a leader in LOCUS, how do you address um, considerations when it comes to being fully inclusive yeah no absolutely i can obviously not speak um, in terms of the residence situation but i can speak about laurier culture and i will say that laurier is very much very inclusive and i will say that what i like one of the things that i like the most specifically about the Brantford campus is that it's so small that you kind of feel like at home and like a family so um i would say that it is absolutely super inclusive and like Emily said, there are supports that you can go to if you do feel that you are being harmed. And Lori does not tolerate any type of behavior that way. But I don't think that there is anything that you should be concerned about if you do identify as part of the LGBTQ community. Great. Okay, so we're winding down our time together. We got one more question in the chat I wanna to get to. And then I've got one more sort of final wrap up question. And then I think we're gonna call it a day. Um, and the question is this, what do you do if you don't get along with your roommates? Uh, it's funny, we asked the challenge question. I kind of expected someone to go there, but there isn't, but they didn't. So someone's put it out there and I'm glad they did. Eugenia, I'm actually going to start with you on this one. You don't have sort of necessarily all these supports, right? Because you're just doing it on your own. Tell us about your experience this year with your roommates, who you did handpick because you're in second year. But I'm guessing, you know, conflicts and sometimes disagreements still happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that obviously living together, even if it's when, with your friends, you do tend to spend more time together and little things um, such as like cooking together and stuff can become a conflict sometimes. But as long as you are both or with all of your roommates, you're willing to work through that and you're able to have like a conversation, like a mature conversation and saying like, hey, this is what's going on, setting boundaries and making a plan as to how you're gonna go along with the conflict. That's how we've handled ours and it's worked out well so far, so yeah. Fantastic. Esther, I know that this is a big focus in Don training and it's just, it's definitely part of the job in terms of being a resource there, the likes of which students who live off campus don't necessarily have to or have to self-serve. So can you tell us a little bit about how it works with you and your community. Yeah, so since we are in dormitory style, you only share the washroom with someone else. But so far, which is really good, my community, nothing, there has been no challenges with that um, at all. Uh, the worst thing is basically the two, the people who share the washroom don't really talk to each other. That's basically it. But if there ever is something that comes up, like there's a disagreement or anything like that, you can always talk to your Don first as they're always from like a new, they always approach the situation with a neutral standpoint. They don't like favor anyone or favor the side and they can help give you advice on what to do and usually when it gets that point it usually gets resolved when the dawn inter um, comes in but if it gets really big or if it's something it's like no I will never live with this person again the department of residence the management team management team will handle that from there <laughs> that's all I can say to this whole 
situation, I feel like. Fantastic. So Bridget, obviously maybe a bit bigger a deal when you're in apartment style, because there is people sharing space more so than they would in a single dorm like Esther's in. What's been your experience with this? Um, for sure, <clears throat> for sure, I'll never lie. There has not personally on my floor this year, but I have experienced times where ha there have been roommate co um, conflicts. Well, number one thing that they recommend doing in the beginning of the year is completing a roommate contract with you and your other roommates, just to go over the laws of the land, when we're gonna throw out garbage, all those kind of you know general things that you need to do to function well in one, one living space. But obviously along the, as the years go, uh, the time goes along, you do kind of get, you know, lazy or stuff starts to happen. So it's always important if there is um, any conflict, kind of what Esther mentioned, to inform your Don. Usually the Don will facilitate some type of group sit down where everybody gets to talk to each other, kind of see how we can work to like better communicate or better live together. But going back to what Esther says, if it continues to kind of not be well or still rocky in the relationship, the department can step in and potentially there can somehow be maybe a transfer of a student out or something, whatever they think is the best solution, they will deal and handle it. Like anything to add is the setup of your res or your residence experience is very similar to Bridget's. Yes. Uh, so Esther and Bridget basically hit the nail right on the head about how the Department of Residence and how Don's would kind of go through that process. Um, but one thing I want to add is that when you come into residence, we treat you like adults. You know, you're capable of being here on your own. You're capable of making your own decisions. You are furthering your education. You're an academic. We trust you. So one of the first things that I would say to my students who come to me with a roommate conflict is have you talked to your roommates about this? Have you had a sit down conversation? A lot of the time the answer is no. Uh, and they'll go back and they'll try to facilitate a conversation. If that doesn't work, if a party's just not really just not having it, then what Bridget and Esther said is what's gonna happen. The Don's gonna, we have a lot of training. We have two weeks in August that we have 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. training. Um, and we get to learn how to facilitate conversations properly. Uh, and so we would sit down, we'd facilitate a conversation, which is basically just us being there and saying, okay, you talk, you talk, you talk, you talk. Um, and hoping that you guys can sort out the problem yourselves because at the end of the day, we wanna help you maintain your relationships with your roommates. And that's done through actually listening to each other and having a conversation. But Bridget is right and Esther is right. If the if the conflict just does not wanna sort itself out, residence management will get involved um, and then they'll move people if they absolutely have to and they'll sort it out um, from there. But yeah, I didn't really, really have much to add. Bridget and Esther really got it. <laughs> Yeah. In three years of being residence management, I think I may have moved less than four people um, in terms of roommate conflicts. So my average was about one a year. And when you consider how many students live in residence, it's not bad. I know that I lived in a double dormitory. So I had a roommate who was like, I could, if I needed to, I could like reach across and touch like with a good lunge. Um, and we weren't best friends, but we got along well because we communicated. Um, so uh, that's one of those things where a little bit of being proactive makes a big difference um, at the end game. I want to thank our panelists for taking the time to be here today. We're going to sign off on this last question. And while everybody's answering, I'm going to populate a few things into the chat. The big one being the link to the virtual Laurier experience, where you can find all of the things that are going on, whether it's virtual stuff like this, live engagements, which is right now primarily our campus tour program. Uh, more availability in Brantford than there is in Waterloo. Waterloo, it's, uh, it's in high demand, but you can check those opportunities out. And the one thing I want to specifically promote is our U Community Discord server. Um, so it's a private community. You have to be invited in to get in. It's exclusive, uh, but it's where you can connect with student ambassadors like the ones on this panel today, as well as students that are making the same decision that you are right now. So you don't have to do it alone. Um, and there's a lot of options out there. And it's just a space where you can talk about those things. So I'm going to pop that link to the DLE in the chat. That's where you can get connected with all of those different opportunities. Um, and I also mentioned earlier on, earlier on in the chat, there's a couple more sessions still on our last day of virtual open house for, uh, for this weekend before we, uh, we wrap that up as well. So ladies, the last question I'm gonna ask you is this, you, let's assume that you have a time machine, you go back in time, what's the most important piece of advice you could give yourself 24 hours before you moved in as a first year? 
Um, and Esther, obviously you didn't do that as a first year student. So why don't you tell us about like the advice 24 hours before you started, like in your Don experience and Eugenia, whether you want to talk about like the first week on campus as a first year, or maybe even your like 24 hours before you moved in with the roommates in the current apartment that you have now. So time machine, what's the best piece of advice you would give um, younger you before you set off on this sort of new journey of independence that is so much about what living at Laurier, whether it's in residence with Lawrence, is all about. Bridget, I'll have you start. Well, personally for me, I believe mine is going to kind of be a little bit basic, but because in my family, I was the first to ever go to a university outside the city of Toronto, um, we were very unprepared. Um, I missed my whole orientation week, and I think all week is like the best opportunity to meet like everybody, even from different residences. So because I came so late, I missed all that, and I missed the opportunity to meet more people, not to say I didn't meet people in my res, but just from outside my res, especially because I lived on an off-campus apartment. So I'll just say, um, be as prepared as you can. If you need those truck rentals, get those prepared probably even prior two to three weeks before. Bring all your essential needs for residence so you're not just like kind of running around when you are there. But that's, yeah, preparation is very important. Yes, yeah, for me, it would definitely be to not be so stressed. I'm a very highly anxious person as is. So this whole experience, I was really nervous to meet my students. I was nervous that my students wouldn't get along together or that like they wouldn't want to like be friends with each other on the first day of moving. Because as a Don, you just really want to see your community thrive and like make friends with each other. So I would tell myself to not be so stressed and to understand that it has been a year of COVID and everyone really wants to get to know each other. So to not be stressed that like my students wouldn't get along because everyone was so willing to meet each other and make new friends and do things together as well I was nervous of my students being homesick as well as me being homesick but that was so not the case at all there's just so much to do when once you get to res and things happen so fast like Bridget talked about the orientation week there's so many events for you things to go to things to do that you really don't even have time to like think of home and stuff like that so that's probably my biggest thing I wish I would have told myself. Eugenia how about you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, similar to Esther, um, mine, I think, would be to just take it one step at a time and not be anxious about the process and just enjoy it. Because um, I think that with every new experience, obviously, there is a little bit of anxiety attached to it. However, uh, they have all turned out to be super well. And I feel like if I was a little bit more calm, that would have definitely helped out a lot. And I think that applies for both like my first week on campus and moving out on my own this year with roommates, um, just taking it one step at a time. Like just the fact that you are here shows that you are able and you will be successful in your experience. So you just need to kind of like take that step, clear your head and then go through with it because you will be okay. Emily, you've got the last word on this one. Um, this is one thing that I, my sister actually just started on the Waterloo campus. Um, she's in the health science program. So this girl's, this girl's working hard. Um, but, and the reason I bring this up is because she was going through this. I went through it in my first year and all of my students went through it. The biggest thing that I hear is what if I'm not, what if I don't make friends? What if nobody likes me? What if I can't make friends like I had in high school? I'm not coming with any friends, things like that. And the thing that I tell all of my students, the thing that I basically hammered into my little sister's head is that people come here, come to Laurier wanting to make friends. You are not the only person who's sitting in your dorm room on the very first day with all of your boxes on like not unpacked yet, you know, with your parents kind of stressing around, moving stuff, your family members there um, who's sitting there going, oh my gosh, I have no friends. I want to make friends, but I don't know how. You're not the only person. Every single person is sitting thinking probably the exact same thing. So if you go into it with an attitude of like, hey, I'm here to make friends, not the attitude of, oh my goodness, I need to make friends, then you might be able to reframe your uh, focus a little bit more and to reframe the situation to think that like the person who's sitting beside you right now at orientation probably thinks the same thing. Talk to them you know, because everyone wants to make friends. You're not alone, especially at Laurier. Um, Laurier is a massive community that supports all of their students. Um, 
it on the Brantford campus, I'm sure on the Waterloo campus as well, I can't walk downtown without seeing somebody I know. I can't go through one of our biggest like um, lecture hall buildings without seeing at least five people and stopping to have a conversation. Um, so it is an amazing community at Laurier. You don't have to be scared about making friends and making connections because everyone is going to want to make those connections as well. So that is one thing that I really wish I would have told myself because I came, as I said, with none of my friends, they all went to a different university. Um, and so I came with nobody and I was so scared, but two days in, I had made friends that I'm still best friends with. Some of them rerun on the Dawn team um, to this day. So you will make friends, don't beat yourself up, reframe your focus. Um, you're gonna meet a bunch of incredible people here and you're gonna have a great time. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again, all the panelists. Uh, we ran a full hour, but I think that the audience really found the whole thing engaging. And I'm sure that if you're watching this recording, you found it helpful as well. Thank you to our live audience, especially for feeding us the questions that are top of mind. Make sure that we get those answered for you. Uh, so until we meet again, in some way, shape or form, I want to wish everybody a good rest of the school year. Uh, and until then as well, as always, stay golden.